Hello everybody, uh, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Thank you for joining me for this uh, update video, which is usually weekly, but actually I've been off for a couple of weeks. Um, first of all, to get back to what I was doing, I was doing some housekeeping for, for the beta in the first week, and then I was doing some housekeeping for my shed, and then I had some time off for good good behavior. Um, which is great because I think we can get too wound up in stressing about um, you know being on the clock all of the time. So I want to give a big shout out and a big th thank you to all of my sponsors who not only pay for my time to work on Inkscape, uh, but also um, basically allow me to, to spend a little bit of time taking a break every now and then and um, just recuperating a little bit. Um, the second week I actually spent doing a contract. Uh, so I've been working with a commercial part partner in order to do some functionality that they partic particularly want. Uh, but we always try and make sure that stuff, uh, functionality gets into Inkscape upstream, uh, simply because it's, it's good for everybody if m the maintenance burden f is lower and everybody gets to enjoy new fun functionality if it's possible, like if, if it's compatible. Uh, this particular piece of fun functionality is, is exciting. Uh, it should allow future extensions authors to have access to things like bounding boxes and paths for um, basically any of the objects that you have, as well as converting anything to any object to path, uh, converting strokes to paths, um, configuring what kind of SVG you would like to have in your extension. For example, if you wanted SVG 1.1, SVG 1.2, um, 2.0, etc. Uh, this should give you a lot more flexibility if you're an extensions author. And um, yeah, it's it's been interesting. It's been a good refactoring pro project too, cleaning up some of those SVG ver versioning fun functions that at the present time in 1.3 will just run all of the time. Uh, but now extensions authors will be able to at least specify what it is that they want. Um, okay, so let's get into this third week uh, because this is a three week com compilation update. Uh, one of my longtime sponsors, PolyArt, has uh, did a perfect job in um, testing the beta and then reporting to me the issues that they found. So I want to give a big th thank you, a special th thank you to, to Polyart uh, for basically doing the, the legwork to tell me about the issues that they see in, in the beta before the beta gets released. Um, the first issue was a garbled layer names in some of the PDFs that they were Im importing. This was to do with texting encoding. Um, so we've got that fixed. Um, the second one was, was editing the first page. If you had a multi-page document, if you selected the page size using the drop drop down, uh, Inkscape would forget that page size. If you went to file save, essentially it was, it was not correctly resizing the document that's been fixed. And uh, the last thing is a user experience bug, which you have probably experienced yourself. And I definitely have experienced myself, but PolyArt was uh, great in explaining what the issue was, which is when you're dragging uh, objects around in the layers and objects dialogue, um, sometimes it just fails, like it just refuses to drag. And the reason for this is because you're trying to drag one uh, shape in inside of another shape, right? and uh, you can't have shapes inside of shapes, so it just refuses, right? So the logical operation is that if you try to do something bad, refuse to do it. But this doesn't feel good, right? Um, it feels in fact quite bad because if you wanted to make a, an, an object a sibling, i.e. put it next to another ob object, you've got to be very careful with the mouse to make sure that the um, essentially you're getting between two objects, which is a much uh, smaller hit space, as we would say in the in, in the industry, than the actual objects themselves. So, in order to fix this user experience I issue, I've made it so that if you drop any shape onto another shape, it uh, moves it to be a sibling. So, it basically, just makes it the next object down. And uh, tests show that users are generally um, happier with this arrangement; that it doesn't get in the way of anything, it doesn't cause any other issues, but it stops a user experience from being sort of clunky, should we say, um, a little bit of a smoothening. Um, 
Okay, so let's get into some of the, the other bugs that I've been work, working on. Um, I fixed a bad clipping and masking editing situation. If your clips had their own tra transforms, these transforms were not applied correctly to the editing nodes, meaning that the editing uh, on canvas editing of your clipping path was sometimes like way off uh, and the wrong rotation or whatever. And so that's been fixed. I'm very happy with that fix. Um, there was a stroke to path problem where essentially it was writing out every single style attribute that it was possible to have in, in SVG CSS um, when you did stroke to path. That's been fixed. You basically end up with like three attributes now instead of a hundred. Oh yeah, so fixing some of the uh, extensions when they were disabled. They weren't showing as disabled in the extensions men menu. Uh, they should basically show as as not available. Uh, this should prevent users from seeing extensions that are not configured correctly from looking like they're, they're available. Um, fixed a, a really annoying bug in the patting, patting, patting? pattern editor uh, where you would select a cell for editing, you know, on ca canvas editing, and then you'd resize or reshape the, the, the object that you, you're working from, and it would essentially move the object around the, the cell that you were work, working on and it was very inconsistent so a small re refactoring actually removed some some code and it fixed all, all of those issues um i i put in an ability to resize the align and distribute icons i can't remember if i mentioned that in the pre previous video sorry if that's a repeat it was right on the cusp of uh, my break um, but it should allow, especially win Windows users that were having issues with very tiny icons in the align and dis distribute dialog specifically, uh, to be able to remedy that. It uses the same size as the toolbox. Uh, this is probably not the fi final form of this fun functionality, but it is at least a way to fix the issue uh, for 1.3. Okay, so other things going on in Inkscape that I haven't done. Inkscape is a wide and varied project with lots of volunteers and other workers. Uh, the GTK4 pro project, which is a funded pro project that Inkscape is paying for to basically bring Inkscape up to GTK4 standards, is in full force now that we have uh, the beta. Uh, Tav has been focusing on doing CMS support, that's color management support, effectively refactoring all of the old code that, that we have to figure out what is this color mode stuff anyway? And which parts of it do we need? And what is the actual story behind color management inside of Inkscape? Okay, um, CRIR17, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He's been doing, uh, been managing our test our, um, issues tra tracker, but has actually been committing some bug fixes re recently. I wanna give a big shout, and shout out and a th thank you for them for essentially dealing with some of the issues. And uh, Mykov has been doing some fixes for the translations. Uh, as he's been uh, doing the Polish translation for Inkscape, he found a bunch of um, issues, especially with the templating, and has been making it um, possible to translate some things that were not translatable before. Uh, ni nice work, My Mykov. And um, there is a bunch of other things going on, but they're not quite ready to talk, to talk about. And... Um, this video I think is getting a bit long already. So final final thoughts. Um, thank you everybody who supports me on Patreon. Um, I'm super happy to be able to have the flexibility necessary to work on Inkscape and to keep pushing. I am looking for more sponsors if possible, either commercial sponsors, if you're a business who is interested in making sure that Inkscape continues, or if you're an individual artist and you want to essentially push Inkscape forwards just a little bit, your support would mean so much. Um, and if you can't, the, don't worry, there is another option. Please share these videos and um, essentially just pass around links so that the, the community of people that's aware of this work is bigger. And um, yeah, I'll see you all hopefully next week.